short break. Uh, we were out for two or three minutes, uh, wait for the next uh, presenter. Uh, the next uh, presentation, next topic in the uh, session, uh, we have um, Iqnal, uh, Mohamed Iqnal Haq with us. Uh, his um, talk will be called Building an Open Source Community in Pandemic, uh, prepared with Ismail Sunni. Uh, Iqnal is a geospatial professional who loves the intersection of spatial mapping, open source geospatial and open data to solve global changes. He works at the cartography team in a ride hailing company in Indonesia, and he helped form up and is an active member of the QJS Indonesia community. Uh, hope, so I'm hoping that the cartography team is watching us. And, uh, it's just a uh, warm welcome and warm uh, hi to them. Welcome, it now. Hi, yes. Thank you, Jan. So, yeah, hello, everyone. Uh, so, yeah, my name is uh, Iqnal. Um, good evening. It's now uh, 9 p.m. in Jakarta time. I, I live in Jakarta, so um, yeah, maybe uh, if there is uh, some issue with the uh, with my audio, uh, feel free to let me know because uh, there's kind of heavy rain, rain right now in Jakarta. Okay, um, okay, I'll start sharing my uh, presentation. Just give me a second. Okay, yeah, I hope everyone can see, see it now. Okay, yes. Okay, uh, so yeah, uh, again, uh, my name is Iqnal, and on behalf of my colleague, uh, Ismail Sunni and Adi Kurniawan, so um, I'd like to share about uh, how we built an open source uh, community uh, during this uh, pandemic time. Um, we are from Indonesia, and yeah, made, I believe most of you have... Uh, heard about Indonesia. We are an island country located in uh, Southeast Asia. So in uh, 2020, we initiate the QGIS Indonesia user group community, uh, known as QGIS ID for short. Uh, so QGIS has become quite popular in Indonesia, uh, I would say for the last six to last uh, seven years from and I myself have been using QGIS since the 1.6 version and actively use it as my uh, daily driver uh, since the 2.12 version. So in this uh, session, uh, I'd like to share about how we initiate this community and uh, what are the challenges, what are the progress that we have made and maybe uh, just sharing ideas uh, on our uh, long-term plan. Okay, let's go to the next slide. So, yeah, I'd like to start with the uh, background first on why we initiate this community. So, um, based on our uh, observations, um, we saw that so many Indonesian discuss about QGIS in their social media, like the Facebook, the Twitter, or other uh, like a WhatsApp group, Telegram group, and and so on. Uh, but this is kind of uh, informal uh, discussions between colleagues, between their co-workers, between their friends, between the uh, college students, something like that. And from, from that uh, uh, findings, uh, it seems like there are a lot of people using QGIS to process or maintain their geospatial data. Uh, so uh, we are thinking that how we can capture this. And so we would like, we are curious how many people exactly use the QGIS, what are their use cases, how they have been doing it, uh, or how they experience uh, bug reporting or contribute to the community and how they find solutions for their own uh, problems. So that's why we kind of uh, roll out a survey, uh, just a simple online survey uh, to the people across Indonesia to have a better understanding and uh, based on that, uh, we initiate. We are trying to initiate the community uh, to facilitate about the sharing, discussions, uh, create regular events uh, regarding the uh, QGIS as a, one of geospatial tools. And yeah, so in uh, 2019, we roll out a survey. And yeah, just a quick 
summary uh, just to give everyone uh, context. Uh, as you can see, uh, we have 316 submissions and after the data cleanings to reduce the uh, uh, duplication, so we're not doing any double counting. It turns out there are only 302 uh, submissions that was uh, valid. And yeah, as you, uh, as you can see that the distributions, uh, most of the respondents or uh, people who respond to our survey uh, is located or lived in Java Island the the one with the most uh, darker blue colors in the southern part of Indonesia that's the whole Java Island we have some people uh, also response uh, resides in Sumatra Kalimantan Sulawesi Bali and also Papua that's uh, uh, that's are the uh, the big uh, island in uh, Indonesia so uh, most of the respondents are located in uh, Java Island Next slide. Yeah, this is the the uh, the first questions that we uh, ask to the people to the to the community on how we want to know how many people are using QGIS as their main or their primary GIS software. So it turns out only uh, thirty five point eight percent from the respondents at that time. We are doing this survey in April twenty nineteen. Only thirty five point eight percent. Uh, of the people are using QGIS as their main software to process their geospatial data. The other, the, the most, uh, the highest percentage, which is 39.6%, is some kind of a mixture with other uh, uh, software or uh, GIS, software, uh, GIS tools. So, and the others, uh, the other 24.7% uh, is uh, they did not using uh, QGIS as their uh, main software. Okay, uh, yeah, so the next thing is uh, we want to know on how long that these people are already using QGIS and uh, most of the respondents uh, said that they have using the, sorry, they have using uh, QGIS for less than one year at, at, the, at that time. And yeah, only uh, a small percentage of 11.1% have been using QGIS for more than uh, five years. So uh, most of the, the user is a, we can categorize as a, a new user, a new QGIS user. And we also want to know on how their use cases, how they're using uh, QGIS itself. So it turns out the most uh, people are using QGIS to create a map. Of course, uh, QGIS is a software uh, in, uh, basically QGIS is a software to create maps, right? I mean that, uh, what is it actually is uh, to do the georeferencing, to do the, uh, to draw the maps, maybe did some queries on the uh, attributes table, something like that, create a layout, create a styling, symbologies, and so on, and produce the maps uh, itself. So, uh, and then the other thing is, uh, yeah, I'd like, uh, I think the, uh, I'd like to echo on what uh, Torsten has mentioned previously about the uh, contribution guidelines. I mean that open source is fully rely on the uh, uh, contributions from its community or from the it, from its users, right? So we are also capturing on how people uh, do some bug reporting or escalate issue if they found uh, issue or errors. Uh, while they are using the uh, QGIS itself. So we are asking, hey, do you ever uh, post a bug uh, into the QGIS community? So it turns out almost, I can say most of the people say that they never uh, report a bug uh, to the QGIS itself. So how then uh, they solve their own uh, problems whenever they found uh, issue or uh, errors or while they are using the QGIS? So, it turns out that uh, so many people are uh, uh, tend to uh, do some uh, search in Google, or they are uh, uh, reading or finding find it from the uh, blogs from other people, something like that. And the other uh, the other uh, twenty three point four percent of the people are uh, tend to asking her uh, are asking their co-workers or their friends. So they just say to 
the friends, hey, I found these errors. Do you know how to solve it? Something like that. Okay. Then, based on this data, then we are uh, trying to uh, create the community. We are in contact with the QGIS uh, project steering committee. We make some uh, queries. Uh, we are sharing our ideas uh, that, hey, we have this data, we have this survey, and we would like to form up the QGIS Indonesia user group for the first time. And then, uh, just about on the February 29, 2020, it's, it's kind of a unique date uh, because you don't have uh, February 29 every year, right? So uh, we have our first meetup. Uh, it was held in Yogyakarta, uh, uh, a city in a, a, a central uh, Java island in Yogyakarta. So we have this uh, first event, first meetup. Uh, we are uh, collaborate and partnering with the Universitas Gajah Mada or the Gajah Mada University in Yogyakarta. Uh, with the students there, with the geography students, uh, we are able to uh, help our first meetup. We did some sharing sessions about the QGIS use cases, so many use cases from the, uh, the uh, um, uh, analysis part, uh, integrating with other open source tools and also uh, uh, QGIS use cases for village mapping, something like that. And also we are sharing, we are introduced about the technical sessions, which is uh, my colleagues Ismail Sunni um, presenting about how we report about in uh, to QGIS project itself. Uh, and also Adi Kurniawan also share about how we can contribute to the QGIS project itself as a translator. In this term is uh, Indonesian. So yeah, we are sharing about, about that uh, about how to uh, work efficiently with uh, QGIS uh, graphical modeler and also uh, some QGIS basic uh, training, something like that. So this is kind of kind of our uh, first meetup. And yeah, after our first meetup, just about two days after we held the first QGIS Indonesia meetup, our government uh, announced the first case of COVID-19 in Indonesia. So yeah, I believe most of us uh, experience are facing this pandemic. Uh, it's kind of such a hard time. Uh, yeah, and then after after this uh, uh, event, more more and more cases are increased every day in Indonesia. We can see from this uh, uh, graphic here. Uh, yeah, so our government released uh, some of the policies uh, restrictions to to limit people to do some. Uh, face-to-face -face meetup or also uh, in-person meetup. So yeah, as you can see, we have our first wave around uh, February and March in Indonesia, and then we have this huge spike, or the, we call it as a second wave, uh, somewhere around June, which is the Delta variants of COVID are spreading out in Indonesia at that time. Then what we do, uh, so we are thinking uh, differently, uh, we are taking uh, we are taking some ap approach to have this community about the events because initially during the first meetup we have formed some some events some ideas on we we even put some rough timeline on okay we will do some uh, regular events uh, for sharing uh, collaborate each other but then the pandemic coming okay so one thing that we can do is doing this offline or uh, the tagline is a uh, di rumah aja or working from home doing all the things from home to stay safe so we held a couple of uh, initiative uh, online talks and also competitions uh, so we have uh, four uh, online talks regularly uh, almost every quarter uh, this is uh, a chance for the QGIS Indonesia member to share about their ideas, to share about their work that is utilizing uh, QGIS more. And then uh, most of the uh, resource person here is, uh, most of the speaker here is uh, Indonesian, but we are uh, also find these online talks is also create a new opportunity for us to have a speaker from another part of the world. Like, uh, so yeah, we are very uh, thank you, uh, thankfully for uh, Etienne, the creator of the Q, uh, sorry, Quick OSM uh, plugins, and Saber, uh, who is the creator of the input app, who uh, spent 
their time to uh, sharing with us with the QGS Indonesia community about about the input apps, about the uh, list map plugins, uh, the integrations with QGS, and yeah, this is kind of kind of good uh, for us. And we also supporting the government uh, on uh, to campaign about uh, stay at home. So we kind of create some small competitions for the people to share about how they are. Uh, making a match with QGIS, and then we can we share some uh, gift or merchandise to to the people. Uh, that's uh, a couple of activities that we did during this uh, pandemic time to uh, growing up the community, engaging people to to join and uh, to share and collaborate. And then, uh, so yeah, we are opening uh, on how we connect, how QGIS Indonesia connect to the online world. So. Actually, we are trying uh, not to be conservative here. Uh, we are opening multiple channels to communicate with the QGS Indonesia community. So we have the Instagram, we have the Twitter, we have the Facebook, we have the uh, website on our GitHub pages, we have the blogs on the WordPress, and we have also the YouTube channel. Uh, inter uh, interestingly, uh, organically, Telegram is the most active one. As uh, I will say, we um, more people can easily interact with each other uh, in the Telegram. Almost every day, there must be a topic or uh, bug or issue found or uh, questions from other members, and uh, there has been a discussions almost every day, and in the, in the Telegram. So I, I think uh, so many Indonesians find that uh, Telegram is the easiest one. To connect with uh, others because of the, the functionality, the, the there is no uh, there is a quite good uh, amount of uh, data that we can share, something like that. So yeah, we are trying to open all the channels uh, so people can interact uh, to us uh, easily. So yeah, this is our uh, channels. Uh, so we have Instagram. So yeah, if you guys um, curious on uh, how we are. Uh, how does the activities going on? How's going on in QGIS Indonesia? Feel free to follow us um, through Instagram, through the Telegram, through the Twitter, Facebook, and so on. We have also the YouTube channel, but yeah, uh, again, since this is a QGIS Indonesia, then most of the time we are using the Bahasa Indonesia. So yeah, uh, you can use Google Translate if you want, or you can learn Bahasa, for example. Okay, uh, next part is, um, yeah, we have this uh, kind of merchandise, QGS Indonesia merchandise. Why we why we built this? Yeah, this is actually just to create a, a good engagement for the people, um, and also create uh, open or open the opportunities for people to do uh, to give us some donations, because all of our events, uh, all the online talks, all the competitions that I uh, shared previously. It's actually uh, a free. Uh, we we don't uh, take any payments there. Uh, people just can join it uh, freely. So the way we do it, it we just sell this uh, um, merchandise: the T-shirt, the tumblers, the uh, water bottle, uh, the stickers, something like that. So uh, people can uh, donate through that uh, um, selling. So yeah, we also provide the transparency of the financial uh, statement which is published in our website. So each time we held some events that uh, we, we sell the uh, merchandise, then we will release the uh, financial statement or financial reports of that event. So everyone can access it. Uh, uh, we, we are pushing a transparency value in this uh, community. And then, yeah, because community is uh, one of the a big uh, benefit of community is uh, we can do uh, so much collaborations with others, right? So we are collaborating with uh, other institutions like the BNPB, the government institutions, the Indonesian National Board of uh, for Disaster Management, uh, Perludem, uh, NGO, non-government organization focused on public elections, the HOT OSM uh, Indonesia and the Perkumpulan OSM Indonesia, uh, 
uh, with uh, Sinaugis, a local GIS training and service provider who actively using QGIS, is mostly to spread out the news on what's going on, what uh, can, uh, what does the community can help uh, to support the, the activities uh, on the ground. We are also um, collaborate with other communities, other open source communities like the OSGO Indonesia, the GIS Indonesia, one of the largest um, uh, geographic information system uh, community in Indonesia, uh, Tropis Info, uh, local uh, environment uh, community and uh, cross-cutting issue related to geospatial. So yeah, I mean, Indonesia is now, I can say that Indonesia is now uh, the community about uh, open source tools, not only in geospatial domain, but for others. It's now, it's really, really uh, growing up. So yeah, it's, it's create uh, a good time and good uh, benefit for each of us to collaborate each other because that by doing collaborations that uh, that is a, a very a good way to share the ideas, to build some things, to build the network and uh, maybe create some new innovations. And we also uh, collaborate with the Pramuka or the big Boy Scout, uh, Boy Scout uh, organizations in Indonesia. Uh, we are also uh, partnering with the United States, uh, sorry, United Nations of uh, OCHA uh, to train the humanitarian organization to utilize uh, QGIS. We provide some uh, technical expertise there about uh, uh, QGIS. Um, so uh, the way we do it is uh, the UN OCHA contact to us and we we announce to the uh, community, hey, we have this opportunity. Who wants to join as a, a speaker to share the uh, knowledge about KGIS? And yeah, we are also uh, collaborate, discussing with the uh, universities in Indonesia who are actively using open source uh, geospatial tools. So yeah, uh, we always open for collaborations. Maybe uh, after this event, if there's someone or some other communities from outside Indonesia wants to collaborate with us and uh, feel free to reach to us. So yeah, this is some of the other uh, um, uh, collaborations that we had with the other communities in Indonesia. A uh, couple of uh, uh, data analysis workshops about uh, working with the satellite imageries using QGIS, uh, processing uh, drone data and and others. So yeah, uh, this is what we did uh, during uh, 2020 and also 2021. And then next slide is uh, related to the challenges that we face. Uh, yeah, we have this uh, couple of uh, challenges during this uh, uh, building this uh, open source community. We we always want to encourage the the member to be more proactive on sharing. Uh, their ideas, uh, knowledge, and uh, we also encourage the people to initiate a local chapter in its cities because as you can see, Indonesia is a quite a huge country. Uh, so we have so many cities, we have 36 provinces. So yeah, there's a lot of uh, opportunities that uh, the members can create their own local chapters in their cities. Maybe just sit together in the local coffee shop after the pandemic, of course. And yeah, we are also trying to provide regular updates and communications on latest updates from the QGIS uh, project steering committee about new plugins, events, on how to report the bugs uh, or issue. So contribute more to the QGIS project itself. And uh, yeah, the third point is uh, COVID-19 number is still worrying, especially in, uh, in my country, in Indonesia. So, uh, so we are fully rely on online event since it's hard to help face-to-face uh, -face or in-person meeting. So yeah, we hope, uh, I think uh, almost all of us uh, are hoping that uh, uh, this pandemic ends soon. And so we can, we can do some uh, new activities together again. Okay, so last but not least, uh, we... Uh, yeah, we would like to share the ideas about what we believe in community is uh, community is, is about the people, right? So we start from the people, by the people, and for the people. I mean, um, we all we are uh, we are still have uh, a long term plan on making this community uh, in a good as a good organizations, um, uh, following the uh, guidelines in Indonesia itself. So, but 
right now we are en engaging people to be more proactive, to share the ideas, to collaborate. That's why we uh, uh, trying to uh, help some of the events, uh, provide them a space. Uh, to share about the ideas, asking questions, and collaborate more. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'd like to end my slides uh, by saying terima kasih. Uh, it's a uh, thank you in uh, Bahasa. So, uh, that's uh, uh, a little share about how we built this community just uh, uh, during this uh, pandemic time. Uh, so, yeah, after this, maybe we have we can have uh, the Q&A sessions. And if you guys uh, wants to know more about us, uh, wants to collaborate or asking uh, any opportunities, maybe you stay in Indonesia or you visit Indonesia, feel free to reach our uh, social media. I think uh, that's all for the slides. Okay. Okay. Terima uh, kasih. No. Uh, <laughs> We have we have little time left for questions, but I'm just going to read them through, and uh, maybe you can quickly answer, try to answer all of them. So the most wanted question is: How did you target the audience for your surveys? And are you an unofficial community, or are you registered as a legal body like an NGO, etc.? And how did the community expand during the pandemic, and by which per which percent? Okay. Okay, yeah, uh, for the first question is uh, on how we spread the surveys, on we targeting the, the people to answer the survey is uh, we contact our colleagues uh, from work and also uh, multiple, uh, wide, the wide variety of the business, private company, government institutions, and also non-government organizations, and even through uh, some of the universities. So we are covering most of the, like the professional GIS, the students, and also the uh, government institutions. So we are spreading uh, the news through social media, some colleagues, uh, some networks that we have. So yeah, we know some, uh, I, we have some friends who works in a uh, wide variety of business. So that that really help us to, to share about the uh, survey itself. Okay, uh, the second questions uh, regarding the uh, legal uh, organizations. So, um, until today, we haven't uh, uh, formed up these organizations as a legal under the Indonesian law. So it's still a, a basic community, I would say. But in the long term, because we have several requirements uh, to fill out as a, a legal organization in Indonesia, uh, uh, so we, we will uh, um, uh, submit this to the uh, government of Indonesia so we can have uh, legal under, under the law. Yeah, again, uh, this is kind of uh, the blocker and the challenge is uh, due to this uh, pandemic time. We already discussed with uh, some of the other people uh, regarding to on how we can leverage up or scale up this community uh, under the law of Indonesia. So until today, we, we haven't become uh, 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 the legal organizations, just a community. Uh, in Indonesia, but in the long term, I think I believe in next one or two years, we will submit this as a legal uh, community. And um, can you repeat the third question, Jen? Um, okay, have... so, no, no, okay. Um, so, how did the community expand during the pandemic, and by what percent? And also, one extra question: I noticed you held the first meetup at the university. Are most universities in Indonesia using QGIS, or is it about the same usage, 35% in other places, uh, like other places? Okay, so yeah, uh, roughly uh, when we start uh, the Telegram group, I think it's all, uh, it's uh, just about 60 or 100 people uh, where we started uh, back in March, uh, February or March, uh, I think, and right now it's almost 2,000 people. Uh, who uh, joined the Telegram group? Uh, so yeah, that's kind of kind of big. But yeah, uh, for the active users, I think it's all, uh, maybe we can say that roughly almost 200 or 500 uh, people who who active in the Telegram. There's a one-off uh, individual who just asked one questions and he never show up again, something like that. But yeah, that's that's the nature of the community, right? And then. Uh, about the university, uh, 
the QGIS usage in university? Yes, uh, I would say most of uh, the university in Indonesia uh, are uh, actively uh, using QGIS. So yeah, maybe they kind of um, mixture. There are some university who fully rely on QGIS, but uh, as far as I know, there are also some other community, uh, sorry, some other university that uh, also using the mixture of uh, QGIS and other geospatial tools, both the one that is free or open source and also the paid one. Okay, okay, thank you. Just in time, so uh, thanks a lot for all the questions and presentations. I'm uh, so if, if you have any further questions to Ignal, please get in touch with him um, through the venue list. So we are going to continue with Felipe Barros. Uh, and and, and um, the title of the presentation will be Data Journalism. Uh, in, in, in Data Journalism.